Hey everybody, Darren Burrows here. Today I wanna to walk you through how to write really good rental ads in order to be able to attract really high quality tenants. Because everybody's heard that bad tenant story either on the news or from another landlord, and it scares a lot of people away from real estate investing. But I can tell you that in my experience, there's a lot of great tenants out there, but finding great tenants starts with writing really good rental ads. So I'm gonna walk you through a step-by-step -step process on how I write really good rental ads in order to be able to attract really high quality tenants. Before we get into that, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, let's get into it. The first step in the process is how do we find good tenants? And in order to find good tenants, we need to be able to advertise to the types of individuals that we wanna have in our properties. And this is something that you as a landlord need to stay on top of all the time because this is constantly changing in the real estate investing space. Years ago, we started putting ads in newspapers and then we shifted to an online presence and that's even changed now to different providers depending on where you are. So the first thing I always suggest is put yourself in the tenant's shoes. How would you go about finding a great place to live if you were trying to rent in your local market? For instance, a few years ago, Craigslist used to be the place to go to find rental apartments here in the city of Toronto. And then that shifted to Kijiji. And now I'm seeing more people on Facebook Marketplace than I'm seeing in any of those two combined. So my marketing efforts are going to be directed towards Facebook Marketplace versus Kijiji and Craigslist. This is gonna vary depending on where you are and the type of tenant demographic that you're going after. For instance, if you're looking to rent to seniors, Facebook Marketplace is probably not the place you wanna go. Having said that, there are a lot of seniors on Facebook. Uh, my mom is in that demographic and I know she spends a lot of time on Facebook but mostly she's just commenting on every single post that I put up. Anyway, enough about my mom. If you're posting on any of these online platforms, the most important thing is to have really good pictures. I think this goes without saying, but you can be guaranteed that if you have no pictures in your ad, that will probably equal no tenants in your buildings. One of the things that I like to do is I like to bring in a professional photographer to take really good quality pictures when I'm complete on my renovations or when I have a tenant changeover. I know there's gonna be some out-of-pocket costs here, but honestly, hiring a photographer to do real estate pictures is not an expensive endeavor, and it will pay dividends in the kinds of tenants that you will attract if you have really good quality pictures. It's also something you can write off against the revenue of your property, so that helps at tax time. If you can't hire a photographer, find the best camera that you can and take your own pictures. Generally, wide-angle lenses give you the best photographs of an interior space, so try to find a wide-angle lens if you can to take your own photos. If you're taking your own photos, try to make sure all the photos are consistent, whether that's in landscape mode or in portrait mode, and do your best to have really good lighting in your photos. There's nothing worse than seeing a dark photo of something that you can't really tell what that room is. I would suggest taking more photos than you actually need because then you can decide which photos you actually wanna use in your ad based on which ones turn out the best. The photo that always makes me laugh is the one of the empty bedroom, and because the bedroom is small, you really just get a picture of two walls coming together and that's about it. Please don't use that in your ads. Nobody knows what that room is, and it's hard to tell unless it's staged that it's an actual bedroom. Now that you've got your pictures figured out, the next thing you wanna do is start writing up your ad. This is something that has changed over time as well because we used to write newspaper ads and we were charged by the word. So we used to keep the ads really short. And then we went to online ads and I used to see that same short form post that you would see in a newspaper. That doesn't work anymore. And then we went to the opposite end of the spectrum which was people were writing long paragraphs trying to create a feeling of what it would be like to live in the space and you have to read a small novel to figure out whether you wanna rent that apartment. But now it's really important that we write point form ads because honestly, people's attention spans just aren't there anymore. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, writing ads. So when you're writing ads, make sure that you point out each of the features of the apartment that you're trying to rent. You're gonna to wanna to point out the obvious things like how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, the square footage, the location, but you also wanna find some things that are unique to your property that will separate you from everybody else out there. For instance, does your apartment have lots of natural light, really high ceilings, in-suite laundry? Does your rental rate include cable and internet? Or do you give free foot massages to your tenants on the day that they move in? Be careful with that one. You never know what kind of demographic you're gonna attract. But hey, I don't judge to each his own. Along with the features of your apartment, you also wanna lay out the kinds of tenants that you wanna attract. What are the requirements that you have and what kind of tenants are you looking for? Now you have to be a little bit careful with this one. You wanna make sure that you avoid any kind of discrimination in your rental ads. For instance, one that I see a lot is no kids in the rental ad. 
unless your building specifically regulates that it's an 18 or above building or it's a senior's community, you cannot advertise that you don't wanna have any children in your building. For instance, my rental ads will often say something like looking for a mature professional couple with good previous landlord recommendations. What that does is it eliminates a lot of people from applying to rent my apartment. If they're a family of five people, nothing wrong with that. It's just that they know that I'm looking for two people to inhabit that space. The other thing that I like to include in my rental ads is if you have a website that is dedicated to your rental properties, leave a link to your website in your rental ad. Another thing that comes up a lot is pets and smoking. And I like to take the opposite approach to many landlords in this scenario. In my rental ads, I actually say that I accept pets because I want people to disclose to me if they have a pet. Most of my buildings do allow pets and I'm a pet owner myself, so I don't like to discriminate against good pet owners because there are a lot of them out there, but there are certain kinds of pets that I may not want in my rentals. But if you say no smoking and no pets, people will just lie to you and tell you that they don't have them and then they'll bring them into the building without your knowledge. But if you say you accept pets in your applications and you ask tenants to disclose that, they'll tell you that they have four cats, three dogs, a hamster, two fish, and a bird. To which you can reply, thank you very much for your application. We've decided to go with another tenant. Another one that is becoming increasingly problematic is smoking because marijuana is now legalized in all of Canada and a lot of the states in the US. So I like to take the opposite approach here and again ask, where do you prefer to smoke? Inside, outside, or I don't smoke at all? so that at least you can have a very frank conversation with your tenants about smoking indoors if you don't allow that. And you can write up in the lease very specific rules around smoking and where the tenants can and can't do that. Another thing that I like to have in my ads is proximity to services. Things like banks, restaurants, bars, cafes, grocery stores, places of worship, and schools. I'm not gonna list out a specific business for every single one of those things in my ad. I'm just gonna include a general list of things that are in close proximity to the apartment. And depending on your demographic, you're also going to want to list your proximity to transit. So if you're in a major center and you're renting to college kids, for instance, you're gonna to wanna to point out the proximity to the closest bus stop or train station or anything else that can get them around the city very quickly. If your demographic is young professionals and you know they're mostly going to be using their vehicles, you wanna point out the closest highways and the closest access to those highways that can get them around the city as efficiently as possible. And of course, if your neighborhood is very walkable and that's the kind of demographic you're going after, you may wanna include something like a walk score, which is gonna rate your apartment out of 100 and show how walkable your neighborhood is. And lastly, in your ad, you're gonna tell people what you want them to do next. And a lot of this will depend on what kind of demand you have for your apartments. If you have a high demand for your apartment, you can have a list of things you want people to complete, and if they don't complete those things, you don't even look at their application. If you're in a very low demand area and vacancy is high, you're gonna to wanna to reduce the list of things you're gonna ask people to do in order to take that next step. But at a bare minimum, at the bottom of my ad, I like to include something that says, Please tell me a little bit about yourself with your application and who will be renting the space. Now, again, do most people include that when they respond to my ad? No, but the ones that do, I put them at the top of the list because those are the types of tenants that I might be interested in renting my apartment to. As you can see, there's a lot of thought that goes into writing a really good rental ad, but that will yield the kinds of tenants that you're looking to place in your buildings. So I really hope you guys found some value in this. And if you did, please go ahead and hit the like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. If there's something that you like to include in your rental ads, I'd love to hear about it. Drop it in the comments section below so you can share your knowledge with my audience. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenboros.com. With that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you the best of success in your real estate investing journey, and I look forward to hearing your success stories very soon. Thank you.